let's hand over to Sue, hand over the airways, as it were, to Sue Allen. Sue, as I said, she, she knew Conrad. She, she worked with him, spoke to him, wrote about him. And she's um, put together a really nice little presentation that she's going to share with us. So, Sue, over to you. Thank you very much, Tom. I'll just share my screen now. Um, I have to say, when you asked me to do this, I was not only just delighted, but I, I did feel honoured because to do this for Conrad felt such a nice thing to do. Um, the work at the bottom you see there on this opening shot is his forwards with for West Cumbria, which was um, a, a drawing, a painting rather, uh, bought in 1980 by the Tate, but which he's reworked a number of times. You can see he does the various layers of landscape there, including plutonium. And I'm sorry, it's rather small, but there's a lot of interesting um, things to see on there. I've, I've listed him here as, as you can see, artist, activist, socialist, feminist, teacher, cultural, um, what does that say? Cultural champion, yeah. He's, he, if anyone was going to network and, and be a champion for culture in Cumbria, it was Conrad. He was Cumbrian through and through. But I could have also added, he was um, erudite, intelligent, sharp-witted, very witty, really funny. He was, and very kind. He was a great guy. And I've known him, we first met in 1998, 1988, on a sofa, on a sofa in a border television studio, which was a late night show called Wallace, which is Eric Wallace. And I shared the sofa with Conrad and uh, Jake Kelly. If uh, Some of you may know of Jake Kelly. He was a BBC journalist who then moved to the dark side and became a PR man for Sellafield or Windscale as it was then. And the two knew each other, both West Cumbrians. And I asked Conrad if he remembered this. And he said, God, he said, yes, we didn't let you get a word in edgeways. I said, too true, you didn't, too true. Um, and moving on, although... This is his best known work in Cumbria, I think, the Monument to the Miners in Cleetamore, where he was born. But he is more well known in the States where he worked most of his professional life as professor of art and chair of the Department of Art and Art History at the University of California in Davis and latterly Professor Emeritus. And he has work in all our major collections and collections in the States and lots of private collections. But going back to 1940, he was born into a mining family in Cleetamoor. And he went on between 1957 and 65 to study at Carlisle College of Art, Liverpool College of Art, and then the Academy Schools in London. Um, his works were often well, they were political and often controversial. We'll come on to quite a bit of that. He was so very often supporting workers against the establishment and drawing attention to injustice. And undoubtedly, his experience of growing up in a West Cumbrian mining community uh, shaped his politics and shaped his, his practice. Um, he's exhibited widely. It'd be easier to say, where didn't he? Where hasn't he exhibited? He, his New York gallery was Ronald Feldman Arts, and he had frequent exhibitions there and solo shows all over the States. And at the ICA and the Courtauld Institute here, the Blue Coat Gallery, Wolverton Art, Wolverhampton Art Gallery, he created an installation for the first um, Liverpool Biennale. Um, and he has works in Cumbrian collections too. Now, these are my own, my very own Conrad Atkinson pieces, hanging in pride of place in my dining room. And uh, he gave me them. This is when I say he's so kind. The first one, he and Margaret had been for lunch as I was buying a print, his wife, Margaret Harrison. Um, I was buying a print of hers. So they came for lunch and as they were driving out, he suddenly thrust this A4 brown envelope at me and said, here. Oh, and I said, oh. So I started opening. He said, oh, don't open it now. I can't bear to see the look of disappointment on your face. And they drove off <laughs> and it was this. And it was just astonishing. He calls it the Cumbrian wallpaper here. In other places, he calls it golden fleece. And it was a work he did and has revisited uh, in response to foot and mouth in 2001 
in Cumbria. The other one, which uh, with the words aesthetics can be a very, a pretty ugly business, is something he's revisited lots of times and is part of his mission to look at and, and get under the teeth of the art establishment, under the skin, not the teeth. What am I talking about? As I said, he's always controversial from his very early works. Well, you can see here a piece from his 1972 strike at Brannan's. Brannan's was a thermometer factory in Cleetonbore, and he documented a year long strike of the mostly female factory staff demanding better working conditions. Uh, and the result of his research was an exhibition of newspaper coverage, case histories, wage slips, local people's photographs, films and videos. And this print, which is uh, the factory license with the signatures of the um, strike committee on it, superimposed on it, he sold these to raise money for the strikers. And that is just so typical of Conrad. And he was still controversial. 2017, there he is, he's Donald Trump wallpaper. Wallpaper is the theme we'll uh, look at again in a minute. But despite all that, he became part of the art establishment, as you do, uh, as a teacher, as, as well as um, an advisor on various arts council bodies here and in the state. Um, you know, so it's it's quite this this contrast between his he loves being a troublemaker, um, priding himself on it, and the controversial works. That contrast between and he in two thousand and six, a fellow of the University of Cumbria, and there he is pictured opening their Vallum Gallery at the University of Cumbria's Brampton campus. Um, some of his controversial works, this thalidomide. Um, I had a list of his exhibitions here and you really don't want to hear me giving a list. I'll send it if anybody wants it and you can look it up on the net. Um, the thalidomide picture was a response to, I'm sure people know thalidomide, the drug was responsible for lots of deformities in, in newborn babies and unborn babies uh, in, in the late 50s, early 60s. And 20 years later, a lot of the victims were still fighting for compensation enter Conrad um, and he did this piece it was for an exhibition at the Haywood and the reason it is as it is is he'd worked out distillers company with a company who created the Lidamide drug they also created all these drinks so his point was oh look the royal warrant on every single label and this was his protest. It actually only stayed up a day or two. The Hayward took it down because one of the royal family was coming to visit the exhibition. They thought it might offend. He created a print of it a bit later. Um, it was for a portfolio put together by the University of London, University College, to celebrate its 150th anniversary and um, to present to the Queen Mother so what does Conrad do? He reproduces the same print plus stories of some of the of the victims. This is very, very typical. He got banned from the Ulster Museum in 1978. It tells you the story there. I'm not going to go over it. Um, that's him in front of part of it in those wacky sunglasses he was wearing on Bruff Marsh in the first photo. He did have to wear sunglasses, I should say, in his later years. He was going blind gradually and he knew he was. He knew he probably would because his grandfather had and it was, um, I forget the name of the condition, but it's genetic. So... Um, after his work was banned in 1978, though, he was welcomed back in 2007. He created an exhibition at the Royal Opera House in Belfast, Some Wounds Healing, Some Birds Singing, which included his new Northern Ireland wallpaper. I told you we'd revisit wallpaper, which is that one there, which has images of from a photograph taken of Martin McGuinness and Ian Paisley laughing together. It was a very famous photograph um, as the, the peace treaty was signed and, and the, um, the two men were sworn in as first minister 
and Deputy First Minister. Conrad described the photo as more surreal than Dali. And an even more surreal turn, the Arts Council bought rolls of this wallpaper to hang in its uh, a committee room in its Northern Ireland um, office. And then, um, but he, Cranda was quite cross. He said, I've worked so hard because the stars of it have never seen it yet. I've worked so hard and they won't come to see what I've done. If they ever come to my house, they'll get tea, but I won't be serving them any biscuits. Uh, in 2020, his work was also chosen by curators uh, of Hillsborough Castle, which is the Queen's official home in Northern Ireland, um, for an exhibition celebrating the end of the Troubles. Um, but as far as we know, the Queen has they never actually got to see it. 2020 was an important year, too, because he it was his 80th birthday and he had quite a few shows in this country, including in Kendall, Penrith and I think at Florence Arts. And he did a lecture at um, Abbott Hall, which I went to. It was very sad. It was a dark, rainy, blowy night and there were only a handful of people. And sadly, he wasn't looked after perhaps as well as he might. So we went, we went, me and Margaret and he went for a pint afterwards to the pub and um, and a Chinese meal, because yeah, I won't say any more about that, no. Themes he revisits, he, he he's, comes back to chew at themes he's done in the past. He was, um, at one of the exhibitions I didn't mention was that he was associated with a landmine campaign and he created a whole series of porcelain landmines with images from popular culture and religious culture and, and art. Um, and they're very beautiful, but, you know, he's highlighting the very kitchness highlights, you know, how awful um, the ease with which such weapons are manufactured, distributed and used. His shopping trolleys feature in lots of um uh, he's done them for poets. They feature in lots of work. He's got Emily Bron that's Emily Bronte's um, and Sylvia Plath's shopping trolleys, but he's done a Wordsworth shopping trolley. Um, and in fact, Wordsworth, Mining and Sellerfield always come to the fore in his Cumbrian referencing. Um, and, and in his portraits, now, there's the Jerry Adams one from the, the Belfast exhibition, but also we've got Wordsworth. And if you go in close to those, which I can't hear, you can see there are tiny images and words and text within those. And there's Melvin posing beside his, which he then bought from Conrad. And there's a wonderful one of Robert Wolfe, which I assume the Wordsworth Trust have, and um, unless it's in the National Portrait Gallery, because he does have some works there. Front covers as newspapers and newspapers generally and con the consuming um, culture and the way newspapers manipulate us has often featured. He's done them for the Wall Street Journal and the Guardian as well as these. But uh, the, the, Cum the Cumberland News one followed up from a Westmoreland Gazette one when Richard Eccles asked him um, to produce this. And it was a limited edition in 2011. And I bought a copy um, as a gicle print. This is him working on the original. And you really do need to see. Can you read some of the text in that? It's hilarious. You can see the larger text, but some of the smaller texts funnier. Uh, we can come back to that if you like, because I'm aware of time running away with us. Um, I can't read it here either on my screen. But well, Wickton artist Brian Campbell, who's a friend, uh, for example, and I have been novelist Bragg in Bus Stop about meaning of Wickton. Minor Cumbrian artist Atkinson is arbitra. That's it's very, very typical of his thought. You just, you've just got to read it. Anyone's welcome to come to my house for a coffee and read it. Um, please do. Um, it is so funny. Farmers agree arts subsidies should be cut. Artists agree farming uh, subsidies sh should be cut. And his piss take of their index of what's on in the newspaper. It's just, just brilliant. Um, in um, 2015, well, well, no, when it was 2015, yes, Tate Gallery, I was invited to the opening by Margaret because this was a really unusual event. Conrad and Margaret Harrison, his wife, another conceptual artist, one of the first feminist artists who 
largely stayed over here when Conrad was in the States because she taught at Manchester Metropolitan University. Um, she, they were exhibited side by side, works in the Tate's collection in a huge space. And it was so great to see their different works together. And that is one of his early Northern Ireland pieces. And Margaret's was protesting about the wages paid to home workers. It was a brilliant exhibition. Uh, and I think this is the final slide with Troy Slater's wonderful image. He put this on Facebook the other day and I asked him permission to use it. It's so touching because it shows Conrad in his big room at Boosted Hill. He lived at Boosted Hill, Hamlet, just above Brough Marsh near Carlisle. But the barn is converted to, to a magnificent sitting room where he invites visitors. Um, and, and this just reminds me of him sitting in his in his chair there. Um, uh, wait a minute, I want to have to just say something about the, oh, because the, the welcome mat, the doormat says welcome to uh, something about the end of the world. Oh, I can't find it now. Uh, and there's a big carpet runner that runs the length of it, which is all about Wuthering Heights from an installation he did about Emily Bronte, and it's furnished with European modernist and American retro furniture. And he'd have these lovely little soirees on a Sunday afternoon occasionally, Solway shrimps and champagne. That was so, so typical. Oh, um, his, his work's so varied. He always felt an outsider. He felt more at home in the States. His work's so varied, there's no one signature style. I suggested to him when I interviewed him you know that there's all there's most of the time there's a political message no 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 he said that's wrong there's always always a political message the cumberland news took to calling him great cumbria's greatest living artist which he took great delight in repeating to everybody he met um but he would then say look here margaret harrison also lives in boosted hill i'm not so i'm not even the greatest artist in boosted hill because he really admired her work too um he he also did quite a bit of pondering on why things weren't happening in cumbria i could go into that but i'm not um and he had lots of ideas about what Cumbrian artists, what the, the civic leaders in cumbria carlisle city council and other councils should be doing for the arts and hopefully we're continuing some of that work. But I want to finish with a quote from the Lord Mayor of Belfast, Martin O'Miller. Conrad Atkinson, you can see it here, was to pop art what the Sex Pistols were to punk rock, the first to the barricades, the rebellious iconoclast, the knife to the gut. Only an artist like him would have taken on that most kryptonite of subjects, Britain's corrosive role in the north of Ireland. And yet he did so with a swagger and a daring do which outraged the comfortable and comforted the afflicted. Conrad R. Atkinson, RIP. Sue, so, thank you. What a, what a fantastic presentation. What a fantastic presentation. There's so um, much more that could have been there. Well, let's have it. Let's let's open. Let's open open the, the phone lines, as they say on the radio. Um, if anybody which wants to chip in with any reflections or any any observations about Conrad, um, then now is the time to do that because I think we're amongst people that care about this stuff, and we're amongst one or two people that 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 knew Conrad as well. Can I ask you, Sue, just to kick it off? So, what sort? What was he like as a human being? He was. Well, I said he was witty. He was very erudite. You had to keep up. You had to be sharp to keep up with him. And uh, he would switch from one subject to another quite quickly. He liked to provoke. He loved to provoke. So you had to be aware of when he was taking the piss, when he was deliberately provoking. And as I say, he was just so kind and his hospitality was, you know, lovely and he was so supportive of Margaret he he did think she was a better artist than he was and he was really one of the early feminists along with her okay all right and you know I, I only I think I, I was in a room with him once um when he did a presentation and I just remember his voice was 
did have a sort of a bit of an American twang to it. Yeah, he acquired, he acquired, yeah, little Americanisms and yeah, he did. He lived at least six months of the year in the States when he was working there from 1992 because of tax, for tax purposes, right. he could only come to England for limited lengths of time um, and, you know, to boost it here in, in um, on Rough Marsh there, uh, but Margaret was working at uh, teaching at Manchester Metropolitan, so she remained here. And they have two daughters. One is in Brighton, so she wasn't very handy, and the other has remained in San Francisco. Yeah. Okay. Helen. Hello. Sorry, I can't find the race hunt thing. I'm Someone? on the night. Oh, that's so. That was just wonderful, and it's made me cry so much. <laughs> Well, I've been crying putting it together at times, but also it was joyful looking back. Yes, at yeah, yeah. Um, um, I'd like to suggest that it be put on the website for a while and, and, and made shareable because at the moment so many people who knew Conrad are sharing about him on Facebook and it would be really nice to, to share it on Facebook so people who aren't in this um, group could, can see it. Um, but I, I, I only actually met him once, but I spent a whole day with him about 10 years ago. I, I was introduced to Conrad by um, Mary Burkett, who was kind of <laughs> art world aristocracy in Cumbria. She'd, been, she'd yeah. been the first director of Abbott Hall Gallery. And she was the most extraordinary character. And I was sent to meet her because I was making a film about Kurt Schwitters. And, and, and um, you know, she... she she kind of been in, instrumental in discovering, you know, un uncovering Schwitter's work in that was in attics in Cumbria, and 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 she said, "Oh, you must meet Conrad," and 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 I I I was invited to go to his house, um, which was the most extraordinary experience because he had the most amazing art collection, and um, and like you say, I mean, he just talked so intelligently and understood exactly what I was doing, and. I'm a working class girl from the north who swamped around the art world in New York and London and whatever, but um, never really felt I fitted in at all. And, and he felt like such a kindred spirit. He just totally understood what I was doing. And he went through my film, which was a, you know, a rough edit of it, and, and analysed it with the most extraordinary insight to the he noticed every little bit and and was especially sensitive to the sound which most visual artists are not but he really really got sound and music and 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 he was really into the music as well and 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 I never met him again and I might have met him at a private view once but after that everything I posted on Facebook he responded to you know, and, and I did occasionally send him emails to ask him things. And he, he always replied within minutes. I mean, I think he, he became in his later life a complete internet junkie. That was yeah. the impression I got because whenever I wrote to him, I got a reply just like that, you know. And, and he, he was just wonderful, absolutely wonderful. So thank you. It's just made my week. It really has listening to you. Thanks. <laughs> It's great to see some of his art as well, um, you know, and presented with a bit of context as you have done, Sue. Amy, over to you. Yeah, that was really interesting because um, I'd not really heard of him before. If, if his name had passed by, you know, I hadn't. Um, in fact, I actually just think I might have heard Sue mention him before, but that was about it. And I, just more of a comment that I wonder if we need to shout more about our Cumbrian artists. Um, I mean, I went to the University of Cumbria. It was Cumbria Institute of the Arts at the time. I didn't do an art course. I did. I was focusing on film, that kind of thing. But this, I haven't really heard much about Conrad or about Margaret. Um, and yeah, I suppose this is part of what the network's trying to do. But yeah, I just wonder if we need to shout more about our Cumbrian homegrown talent. <laughs> yeah, I think we should, frankly. Uh, why shouldn't we, you know? Um, uh, let's think on about how we can do that more effectively than we are already at the moment, perhaps. Jamie. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. Perhaps we could take Comrade's ideas of what what could or what should happen in Cumbria, and then as that a starting point for a, another discussion. Yeah, yeah well, I, I did have some stuff at the end of this. He had a great idea for um, the sculpture in Caldergate that would have, in my mind, have been 
possibly better than the cracker packer we've got there uh, now, but he was talking a lot to the council there. I wish Colin had been here because Colin was talking to him, Colin Glover. Um, and it, was it this Carlisle Renaissance, one of those initiatives to, um, uh, you know, regenerate Carlisle? Um, but the things he said in the he'd written loads of letters to the papers he did that quite a bit and when I interviewed him he said um, he just had a letter in and about the la slating the lack of civic pride in Carlisle and was really irritated and frustrated at what he saw as a lack of vision um, that Cumbria never seems to recognize the benefits of culture for individuals the community and the economy or appreciate the richness of artistic talent within the county, which is, of course, what we're all about. And he pondered that things were seem to be different in urban areas like Gateshead or Liverpool. And he wondered if it was because we were an agricultural area and more resistant to change. Um, they welcome change industrial areas more than we do. And he had a theory, uh, or he was quoting a theory, that San Francisco's Silicon Valley would never have emerged if it hadn't been for the drawing and painting and music of the 60s and 70s. Yeah. When I, I had a similar experience to Helen, I only met him once and it was at his house and it completely blew my mind. It, it was one of the best meeting I've ever had at work. I went there on my motorcycle I've never been to, uh, what is it called, Bruff Sand? The yeah, area. It's too rough by sands, yeah. Yeah, I've never been there before. And I went on a winter's day on my motorcycle and he showed me his amazing art collection. He showed me the easel that oh, he really? bought off John Lennon and all this other stuff. Yes, that's and the right. fact that he was friends with the B-52s. And I was like, what? This is the most, honestly, I can't explain what I felt. I was on a high for about two days after meeting him. In 2019, we were trying to talk about something we might do in the future about his 80th birthday, which unfortunately didn't come to anything because of COVID and other things. But yeah, honestly, what a guy. Yeah, let's keep talking about him. I think Jeremy Latimer and Kate Brundra were also talking to him at the same time about things that perhaps never quite came to fruition. He really, really would have liked... Um, is there somebody from Tully here? He really, really would have liked an... Ex <laughs> solo exhibition at Tully or even a joint exhibition with Margaret and he felt they just never seemed to want it I'll just throw that in yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> and Joe Joe um Riley um at Art Jean who's got Covid so she's said in the chat Archie. there yeah. doesn't feel like coming on camera saying our trustees at Art Jean are suggesting a Cumbria-wide celebration of his work mm. with Wordsworth Trust leading question mark Joe, are you, do you want to talk about that at all, or do you want to stay off camera and also stay muted? Uh, thanks, Tom. Um, sorry, everyone, I don't feel very well. <laughs> you can, um, Joe. But I'm uh, absolutely buoyed and delighted um, to be uh, privileged to hear Sue's presentation. And I spent um, pretty much, I was at a um, rather strange online conference yesterday, uh, on environmentalism, but I confess I spent quite a lot of the day uh, searching around various archives online to look at Conrad's work, um, and I've been, you know, really inspired by both that exercise and, and what Sue's had to say today, and also the responses from Helen and uh, Jamie, and it's, it's fabulous. Um, yeah, I, I, I think um, I know Margaret's work better than his, um, but I, I've never met either of them. Um, but our uh, uh, trustees, yeah, I, I, it's just it's just an email discussion at the moment, um, so uh, it hasn't gone to our board or anything. It's not so much a you know formal proposal, but uh, uh, obviously, my Maddie Maddie was laughing. She was saying, you know, I was saying, oh, could you know, could we have some work at, at, at the Art Jean Gallery? And um, she said, well, you know, the New York Gallery would insist on. Uh, huge, huge amounts of um, environmental control and, and security, and we, we might not, you know, be able to afford to do that. I'm afraid. Um, but she said, but it makes me laugh because he kept his own work, you know, in in uh -huh. kind of dusty barns and um, <laughs> didn't really care about very much about all of that stuff. Uh, so there, there may be ways we can, uh, you know, we can take some stuff from that, that's in private hands too, and uh, it's certainly, it's certainly for the Poker Barrow. That would be amazing. 
it certainly feels like there's a there's a beginning of a groundswell of support for some sort of legacy moment or something to do um in connection to conrad kate did you want to chip in about tully house or um well sarah is here from tully house uh well i'll pass to her in just a moment but uh, as somebody who works across tully house museum uh the words of trust and lakeland arts taking in abbott hall um i feel like there there is a conversation that i can kind of pick up certainly with the words of trust um, and, and Sarah, I don't know if you want to add anything. I know you're new to the county and new to the job, so um, I don't mean to be unfair to you, but this has been a really interesting presentation, hasn't it? I think it's um, been fantastic and I've been making quite a few notes um, because obviously I'm new, I don't know who anyone is. I've been noting down people's names and um, I'm certainly going to go back to colleagues and Tully, uh, Tully and mention this. Um, we have a sort of programming committee that meets monthly and so I will... Um, take it to them and mention it um, ahead of our next meeting. It feels like a bit of a moment really and an opportunity that I don't think we should um, allow to slip by. Um, so yeah. I'm happy to pick up with them. It's shown twice at the Words with Trust in the past when they had a contemporary art gallery, for example, and at, obviously at Abbott Hall, and it had works in Tully have some in their collection. But would it be great if we could have a collection at the same time of works in all these venues? So the public, if they wanted, could tour the county to all of these. Yeah. Uh, oh, I've got quite extensive notes, though they're scrappy and full of typos for this presentation, which I'd happily send to you, Kate, uh, and or anybody else who wants it, if you think it will help. Uh, it's to I, go with the slides. It's Do send them, um, Sue, and I will pick up with Sarah. And uh, in fact, my, my Cumbria Museum Consortium programming colleagues because it feels like a moment not I can send the PowerPoint as well but it's big because of all the images yeah. so I'd have to send it via WeChat. Okay. okay. <laughs> yes to a countywide exhibition. Okay. Um I'm conscious of time Tom and I know Danielle wants yeah, to Yeah Danielle off you go. Come off me and off you go. Have you can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Hi, hi everyone. Um, wow, um, I've only seen um, his work online, um, so it's quite emotional because it's stuff that I'm passionate about and it's so mind blowing and inspiring. Um, but when you could hear the passion uh, and the enthusiasm of, of him through Sue's words about his wish list um, and wanting to try and piece the civic leaders and and stuff together to make things happen to to make the civic pride become more ground level up so that things can evolve and things can change instead of just token gestures of things and then it gets and then you know development and other things happen and then the people then get forgotten of what this supposed to be the core thing was about you know getting the funding and things and actually and stuff so yeah so what i was thinking and what i was trying to get to the point of was um finding out what his wish list was from all the people that knew him and then maybe through the cvs and the lep and the cumbria Art culture network and other organizations could maybe try and make those wishes come true as that legacy um as as well as the exhibition or getting you know things everyone finding out more about what talent we've got in cumbria and what a legacy he can leave behind and continue that's yeah, what you, does, basically. <laughs> well, that's really supportive to hear that from you. And it's it's great to hear how, you know, even if it's just online, the impact that someone's art can have on someone is a wonderful thing to behold. And I think, um, you know, it, he stretched boundaries, frankly, didn't he? And he, he did stuff that was that was different and that no one else had thought of. That's the way I'm perceiving it anyway from Sue's presentation. Um, and that's always to be hugely, you know, impressed by, I think. Does anybody else want to just chip in before we finish on Conrad? We've got another sort of five minutes or so. Does anybody else want to chip in with any reflections or any anything to add to the mix of um, of the cauldron that, uh, that Sue has got us thinking about this morning? I've got another couple of quotes, if if, if short quotes. If, yeah. if um, he said, "Making art is really quite easy. What's difficult." is inserting yourself into society, becoming visible and deciding what subjects to tackle and how. 
That was one. And I asked him, he, he did say, I love Cumbria, but I don't want to live here permanently. Sadly, because of his illness, he did end up. He said, well, you can't get a decent martini in Boasted Hill. And I asked him about his aspirations. This was 2009. What did he want to do? And he simply said, to continue to contain my rage and anger and appreciate the beauty of women. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Thank you, Sue. Well, um, we'll see what we can do with your presentation, Sue. Um, I think Amy, Amy might be able to work some magic and we'll see what we can do with that in due course so that we can try and get that to a wider audience. There's obviously a recording of this meeting which will go on to Facebook and Twitter as a matter of course um, at the start of next week. Um, but I, can, I, I kind of feel like the, 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 the sort of presentation for Conrad that you've done, Sue, might well sit somewhere for some time as people so that people can either bump into it or appreciate it or look out for it and we can we can guide people to it as well because i think you've covered all aspects of his life um you know right up to the to the to the present day and what what a what a great insight you were able to have by you know your comings and goings with him be it professionally or otherwise and how wonderful that you've got some of his art on your walls as well i really like those two pieces that you had that you've obviously got there um i think you said in your dining room is that right yeah, and the Cumberland News in the living room. Yeah, that's great. I'm going to I'm gonna find that again. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you to thank you to Sue for that. Um, should we give a sort of virtual round of applause for Sue for that work that she put into that presentation? Um, really appreciate it. And, um, uh, you know, I'm sure Conrad will 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 actually be there for quite some time to come in our thoughts and our minds and our reflections as we go forward looking at the art scene in all its different facets in Cumbria and who knows whether we can think of something to do um, that might reflect um, our thinking about him come the future as well that's great thanks ever so much Sue